What hit you? Your workhorse, I mean. A kamikaze drone, most likely a Landsat. As we can see, four wings. More debris over there. Here's what they load this device with. Pieces of rebar that get dispersed and do their thing. That's for fragmentation, right, 1F? Yes, for fragmentation, sort of like shrapnel. Mm -hmm. Rebar, 14 millimeters in diameter. Is everyone safe and sound? Yes, thankfully, everyone is alive and well. We just need to change the wheel and it will be back in action. They didn't do much damage. They can't catch us with ordinary artillery. They can't defeat us on the battlefield, so they want to catch us with UAVs, missiles. Actually, this isn't the first times we're targeted by missiles, or loitering munitions. That's how they're trying to fight us. During the entire war, we've suffered heavy attacks. We are in the Kherson region. Only three weeks ago, this territory was under occupation, and we were in the Mykolaiv region, visiting the 59th Motorized Brigade. The artillerymen of this brigade were doing everything they could to liberate this territory, as you can see, with success. How many enemy targets did this howitzer hit during all this time? We don't keep count. You don't? We can hit three to four targets in a single day. We have an advantage over our enemy now. But we're waiting, like a wound spring, when you're ready to run there to finish them off. We're back with the brigade, to talk about their activities, since it's no secret that on this axis, artillery was crucial, as they have destroyed enemy ammo dumps and warehouses. We have been waiting for you, we love you, we pray for you. Hans, we are now in the Kherson region. Kherson city is now free too. For the civilians, it was a welcome surprise. Because it was said that the Russians had a strong fortification line, and it would be hard to punch through. Why did they flee? During all these months of the war that we spent here, on the contact line between Mykolaiv and Kherson, we kept them under heavy fire. They suffered great losses in personnel, vehicles, and our long-range artillery severed their logistics. That is, their fuel, rations, equipment. They were forced to flee. There were calmer days. And there were days when we engaged dozens of targets. In some of these engagements, we had 100% hits on the target. What motivates me, enemy in my home? That's like a disease. You either treat or remove it. The enemy has to be driven out of our land. As it's rightly said, if we stop fighting, we'll lose Ukraine and our homes. If they stop fighting, there will be peace. Of course, the entire Ukraine is my home. Becoming an officer was my childhood dream. Of course, when I was a child, I never thought I'd go to war and fight, that something like this would happen. I enrolled in the academy, finished my studies, I like the military. Even if I hadn't enrolled in the academy, and wasn't in the military now. After the full-scale invasion I would beyond doubt, still be in the armed forces of Ukraine.
Currently, I'm a battery commander. Otherwise, I'm the commander of fire team number two. That is, I have three cannons under my command and three fire teams. A fire team is? A medic rides with us, plus a compass man and a crew that consists of 10 men. What was your starting rank? I started my service as a humble driver. My service began in 2019. What do you have to do to get a position like that in three years? When you start as a humble driver, learn. Learning all the way, as much as you can, learn. Now I just need higher education to become an officer in the future. Our maximum range is 20,400 meters. 20,200 meters in windy weather like we had. You can't hear yourself talk, and my maximum was 20,400 meters, all I could reach. We had to burn them. I put it at 20,200 and hit them. We burned their ammo for grads. I was around Novomikolaivka. And they were below Zeleny High, Ternovi Podi. And lower still, the Barvenik village, around that area. That's my maximum. I was told that you can't hit at maximum range. I did quite the opposite. We're driving across the liberated Kherson region. Only three weeks ago, the enemy controlled this territory. What made us be able to be here? Well, foremost, it's probably artillery. They gave the most sweat, the artillerymen. That liberated this area. We had two weeks of work. Honestly, of not the easy kind. From morning till night, and at night too. We did good though. And the infantry, the guys did great. They advanced, we covered them, they advanced. We shelled the orcs, and they advanced, bit by bit. Our artillery saved their lives every day. The artillerymen didn't sleep, they worked all the time. To make them finally understand. That nothing but death awaits them here. Their ammo, logistics were knocked out. The HIMARS guys knocked out their pontoon crossings. They sank those. Artillery rules, and it backs that up. We had tanks under our belt. APCs too. Self-propelled artillery, their howitzers too. We started gradually shelling them. And they started running. Journalists once came and started asking me when we were going to enter Kherson. That was several days prior. I told them to wait for a few days and see. We'll be in Kherson. So you don't have less work now? I don't. I still have enough, they moved to the other bank, and started digging in there, and started shelling our side. Nothing to worry about though, we'll get them out of there too. However long they dig in there, they may remain there forever or in the trees, nowhere else. 
I think they don't have many options, either they go to Russia, or into the soil here, in Ukraine. We went through hell in March. Then, from morning to around 1 am, we spent three whole ammunition packs. It was the toughest battle, when the Russians advanced, in columns. That was the toughest battle. In a day, from a single position, we fired around 300 rounds. That's when they tried to get to Mykolaiv? Yes, it was. They advanced like that. And stayed in those fields. The 59th Brigade are the men and women F1, who were one of the last to fight the invaders, before they seized Kherson and the right bank of the Kherson region. Later, the brigade made an enormous contribution to the liberation of these territories. Early in the war, we met them on the other side of the Dnipro, near Olishki. We had a battle, then crossed the Dnipro set up our defense near Kherson, we defended for two days, winning time to build proper defensive lines around Mykolaiv to fight them back. After that, we withdrew to Mykolaiv and they faced our strong defense. We defeated them and made them retreat a bit. That's where the front line formed, where we stood in front of each other for eight months. During all this time, we had been eliminating them. And this lead to this result, they had to run from here. We were a bit short on people to stop their horde. They had columns advancing, and while we were retreating, we still fired, we weren't just running away. We still hit them back, destroying many vehicles in the process. Near Mykolaiv, before the Mykolaiv airport, there was a hole, Russian, division's worth of D-30 howitzers, dot. It remained there. No one got out of there alive. How many is a division? That's 14 guns and over 100 people at the least. At first, I didn't realize what it was. It was hard to see from afar. I thought those were sleeping bags or something. But when we arrived there, the crows were already picking at the brains, trying to find something that wasn't there. From there, we began our move, we got some reinforcements. Then we gradually advanced, and here we are. In about three weeks, the counter-offensive began. I didn't have enough sleep or food for two weeks. I was tired as hell, but we got through. The more of them you know you've downed the better you recover. My guys are great too, they worked so hard. That they deserve statues erected in their honor. This thing saves me often. Easily calibrated and user-friendly, it's a metal detector. You can't demean without it? I can, but it's easier with it. You can't visually detect some dug-in mines. We went to demean today. In a forest that was mined by our enemies. What did you find there? F1. A detonator. They mined a lot. For example, they bury mines under roads. How do you find it? With the metal detector, we find it. And use our equipment to neutralize it. What do they mine most often? 
roads, abrupt turns, narrowing roads. In places it's hard to circumvent. Look at how it reacts to metal. But it's hard to work, lots of debris, fragments, and it takes a whole lot of time. There were days when we could clear a kilometer, in no less than three hours, and we were destroying just the most dangerous ones, marking the rest. We were one of the first to enter the Antonivka bridge. We were glad to enter, people welcomed us. Emotions fill you when people meet you, right? Russian recon groups went from this side. How many times did they try to get through to you? Lots of times. How many is that? According to our calculations, around 10 times. We stopped counting then. Did you or the infantry stop them? Both we and infantry, with all our strength. We are at the positions of the 28th Mechanized Brigade. This factory has long served as a fortress for our mortar men. From behind it, they shelled the enemy, quickening their retreat from the Kherson region. For almost eight months, this position had been the closest one to the Russians. What did they shell you with? Mostly 120 millimeters, 152 millimeters. Tanks. We had it all, cluster bombs, brats. When was it the hottest here? Better ask when it wasn't. Why did the Russians run away then? And leave the region? We started hitting them back harder and harder. We didn't let them recover. Maybe they got too tired and decided to get a vacation. It was from a shelling on a single day. We collected around two bucketfuls of shrapnel. My senior's initiative was to make a trident out of those. Out of spite. These fragments are from how many shells? Four shells. There's a shell nearby, those were like this one. It's 152 millimeters, a long-range weapon of theirs, which pestered us during the entire time we spent here. They harassed us day and night, they even shot pions at us. After pions hit, we had to restore our trenches numerous times. We invested immense efforts in this position. What we see on the walls of the building you lived in, are they the results of such fragments hitting them? Yes. We chose this place because there can't be any direct hits from tanks or any other direct fire weapons, because the building was our shield. It's much more beautiful on this side. It was hit by grads and by various mortars, even 120 millimeters ones. 152 millimeters, but the scariest thing to fire at us was a tank. If a 152 millimeters is scary because of the fragmentation, a tank can punch right through a wall. Most of the through holes you can see aren't the work of a mortar. In the rooms with big holes, they were all made by a tank. Nevertheless, our favorite place we brag about is that impact right there. 
It was around 4 a.m. The explosion was so powerful that half of the guys fell from their beds. They were thrown off, the ground was shaking. That's from a pion. Here it is, we show it off. You see, one shell costs more than a hundred of ours. We felt so self-satisfied that they wasted one on us. We hit their ammo dumps multiple times. We didn't allow them to properly respond even. They felt a certain shortage. We also harassed them by hitting things, from household items to military hardware. We destroyed IFVs, both cargo and fighting ones, that carry troops. According to our estimates, what was recorded on video, that's 12 vehicles. What hasn't been recorded but was just seen burning, wasn't counted. Plus cargo trucks, plus ammo warehouses. Once, we were firing to suppress at night, and we accidentally strayed and hit an ammo dump. The fireworks were all night. Smaller calibers could stand here, but it was us, because we could strike behind their lines. This was much more important. Look at it fly. This is the factory's main glory. As you can see, it suffered a lot for our sake. By the way, we were the first from our positions to hoist a flag. It's pretty battered now, but it still hangs. Our positions are named after Scandinavian gods. For example, the nearby village. There was Thor. We are Loki. The call sign of another battery's commander was Zeus. The pantheons have joined in a common cause. That's all artillery, right? Yes, in terms of our positions, you can get us out of here only with drones, if you drop something from above, or with more precise fire adjusting. Mortars can't do that, only direct fire can do that. But that's impossible due to the factory. Is this the secret to your success? No, I think the people who gathered here is. Not a single mobilized soldier would compare to a professional soldier, which our guys have become during this period. This includes motivation, skill, and other things. As they say, morale won't replace 100 shots per minute, but sometimes it does. Which army branches were crucial for the liberation of Kherson and the right bank side of the Kherson region? Look, first of all, it was infantry, artillery, our operators. Reconnaissance? Recon too, yes, great guys. Without them, we are like blind mice. Wouldn't have been able to see anything. and our anti-air forces. The guys saved many lives. From the rockets, drones, shockheads. Same with our air force, it operated here every day. Both on planes and helicopters. Everyone did a great job. Our logistics, engineers, signal troops. Thanks to all of them, we liberated Kherson. We talked with the brigades that made a lot to liberate the right bank part of the Kherson region. But they were moving in from Mykolaiv. And the president commended many more brigades, because, of course, much many brigades took part in the liberation of this area. Some of the people advanced not from Mykolaiv, but from Krivi Ri, and there have been fierce battles there, back in September, resulting in the liberation of several dozen settlements. Then there was a small operational pause. And then the Russians started running, because all their ammo was destroyed. We will later try to talk with the brigades that advanced from the Krivi Ri region, because it's important to show all the heroes who bring our victory closer.
We will celebrate New Year in Crimea. You'll see.